Hi, this is a tutorial about how to use PlayingCards.io to set up your own custom board game. I'm not going to go into every piece of functionality for this um, online platform, uh, just the things that are not perhaps the most intuitive. Um, so first you go to PlayingCards.io and you scroll right down uh, till you find the button that says Custom Room and then click on Custom Room. If you click start game, you then are given uh, your own custom room and you click enter and you can start playing with the cards, flip a click to flip and move them around and so on. We don't want any of this stuff. So what we're going to do is edit the room to be a custom board game. And I'm going to use a game that I designed called How to Fail Your Research Degree just to give you a sense of how this platform works. OK, so if we look at the menus here, this top one, more options, it gives you some help and documentation or the ability to share the room. The main thing we'll be doing is this one, edit table. So I'll just briefly look at the others. That just gives you a URL to share your room code. And this final one makes it full screen or not. OK, so we're going to go into edit table. And what happens is you're given the edit dialogue. So here, here we can see all the cards that they have pre-populated this game with and here is a hand so this is where the player can see their own cards but uh, nobody else who's playing can see them so first thing i'm going to do is disable the hand because in my game there are no private cards and then what i'm just going to do is delete everything that's in here <clears throat> okay so when I'm showing you this, I'm going to assume that you have all your card assets and your card art already produced as image files. There are alternatives to this, uh, but that's the way I'm going to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a custom board. So I'm going to upload an image that is my custom board, and it's this, uh, this image here. It took me a little while to get things into the right kind of layout so that I could fit everything on because this is a game that has it takes up a lot of space um, but there's the image and you can see I've uploaded it here I want to edit the board and I want to make the size full screen okay so that's the background and you can add um, instructions in the background if you have space but this is essentially where the players are going to be putting cards and um, so it, you might not need a board for your game but I do need one for my game OK, so then what we're going to do is start adding card decks. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is add an empty card holder. And it's going to go there. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is add a custom deck. So you can see here custom card deck. And I'm going to add this to the game. Now, it gives you options here for your height and so on and how uh, the the cards interact when you click on them it that's all fairly intuitive so i'm not going to go into that what i will talk about a, a little bit is um the not so intuitive stuff so here we have a, a section called layers and you've got options here for the card face and the card back and they've again pre-populated it with some images now if you click on them uh, you can see that it gives you this option down here and you can choose all the same or different per card. Now my card backs are all the same, uh, so I'm going to keep that all the same. But actually, I don't like this image. Um, I'm going to delete the layer. So now I'm going to set these card width and card height to the, the width and height of my cards, which if you right click on them and you can look in properties, uh, details, uh, it shows you the uh, full resolution size of that card there, which is 600 by 450. But because of the amount of space that the play takes up on this game, I'm going to make them much smaller. So I'm just going to make them a, a percentage of that and make sure that I keep the um, the ratio of, of width to height correct. So I'm going to type in here 120 by 90. And I'm happy with the other options. They're all fairly intuitive. So if I return to layers, I'm going to click first. Let's set up the card back. That's the easy bit. So if I go to the card back, uh, 
I've deleted the layer that was pre-populated there and I'm going to add a new image layer. I want them to be all the same. I don't want them to be different per card. Uh, and I want them an image, not text. Now, if you choose text, you can simply type, type some text in here, but that's not what I want. I want to use my image. So I'm going to upload an image, which is in here. And it's the first card back, which is this file here. So there it is. Now, what you're going to have to do, it doesn't like placing it in the right place straight away. So what you're going to have to do is make the card, make sure that you've dragged the hand up to the top left and then the arrow down to the bottom right. And that makes the card actually fit in the space that you've given it. I don't know why it doesn't do that automatically. It's just one of the things about this platform. So that's it. <clears throat> I'm finished with the card back. Now let's talk about the card face. And once again, I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to delete the layer that they've given me. I'm going to add a new image layer. Now, I do not want all the card faces to be the same. I want them all to be different. Now, this is the bit that's not quite so intuitive. What it's giving you here is a reference to um, an image. So you do not upload the image directly here unless you want it to appear on every card. So what you might have is that your image is the same for every card, but your text is different, in which case here you would select that the image is all the same. You would add a text layer on top of that. Uh, but that's not what I want because I've pre-prepared all my cards. So I, I want them to be different per card. And what it's doing is telling me to look for a field name called image one. And you can see we can't upload an image here because it's just sending me somewhere else. And where is that somewhere else? It's up here in the card data field. So if we switch to card data, again, you can see this is pre-populated with a standard deck of cards, you know, jokers, uh, ace of diamonds, all that kind of thing. And there aren't any there. What I could do is if I scroll all the way to the bottom is add plus one of every card down here and that will give me a standard deck. So if I do click this all plus one, you can see it just puts one of every card into the deck and if i choose clear all it takes them all back to zero but i don't want these cards at all so i'm going to click the remove everything button and it gives me a warning do you do you want to empty the deck to nothing yes i do okay so now i'm going to add a card type and it gives me this here now do you remember before in the layers we saw the reference to uh, image one well this is the field for this card type but we can add different types of card. So I'm just gonna go through that with this deck so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to upload my image uh, and I'm gonna upload this card that says discussion with experts. And then I'm gonna call this card discussion with experts. Now, if I return to my uh, folder here, you can see that in my labeling for these cards, I've actually put in the file name how many of each card should appear in the deck. So I've got the name of the card here, and then this five is how many I want in the deck. So what I can do at this stage is add five of that type of card. And then I can move to a new card type and I can upload a different image. Let's upload this one methodology and you can see here again, I've got five of these in the deck. So it's a different card. It's got a different name because it's a different card type. But I still have five of them. And you go through every card that you want in your deck, uploading them in this way. So I've got one here that says refine research questions. And again, that's a card type, but this time there's going to be nine of them. Whoops, nine. Okay, so you continue in this way until you have your full deck. Now, what you might want to do, if you just have every card is different, you might want to upload all the images and then wait until the end and add the plus one to everything button. It's up to you and it really depends on the way your game is designed, how you're going to do this. But the point is here is that the layers um, 
sends this field name here, image one, it sends uh, the card to look for the image in that field over here in card data. So once they're all uploaded, you want to check that they're showing correctly. So again, you use the hand to drag it all the way to the top left and the arrow to drag it all the way to the bottom right. Uh, to the bottom right. This ensures that your card fills the space that you've given it. If we click done, we should be able to see now that we've got a deck of 19 cards. So those are the two fives and the nine that I put in. Now, if we come out of edit mode again by clicking the little briefcase icon here, you can see that I can flip these over. OK, refinery, there it is. So I can click to flip them. I can move them around and I can place them in my game. What I can also do is drag uh, the cards to the card holder and you'll see that that automatically resized itself when I did that. So that's a good trick to know. So if we go back into the edit mode, I want this deck to appear in that card holder. So I drag it here and it sort of, if you drag it in, it sort of snaps to position. So I'm going to add some uh, more information about what this deck is. So it's called the context deck. So I can add a, a text label. Um, I'm happy with my player not being able to edit that label. And what I do want is a button that both recalls all the cards on the table and shuffles them. OK, so again, if we move out into the game, let's say I've played a load of these cards. If I click this recall and shuffle button, everything is pulled back in. And this time you can see that they've been, well, they should have been shuffled. Yeah, so it took us a while because I haven't put many cards in yet, but they've been shuffled. So recall and shuffle. OK, so that's the basics of adding a deck. There are other aspects in here that you can add. There are game pieces, spinners, counters, checkers pieces and a deal button. All of these things are pretty intuitive. So I will let you uh, experiment that with those in your own time. So this is my game fully input into the into the platform. I've got four different decks constructed in the way that I just showed you. Uh, and I've also got a different type of card that's a different size. And on these ones, you'll notice that I've asked the uh, interface to give me a close up um, so that when the player clicks on this card, they can see the text more clearly. Um, and I would say this game's a little bit problematic because playing takes up so much space that actually my cards are a little bit smaller than I'd really want them to be. Um, but fortunately, there's not much um, information on these cards. So if I flip back into edit table, you can see all of these things laid out. And if we look at one of these new decks, the event decks, um, if I if I click on edit and then I can edit everything here, you can see that this is a deck that's just got one of every card in it. Um, so every card is unique in these decks. Now, there is a way to import cards uh, using a, a spreadsheet, a, a comma separated values file. I didn't do that. I did it by hand. But if you happen to have your game set up in a comma separated values format, then great. It will save you a lot of time putting them in here. Uh, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. One last thing then, and this is critically important. This platform is free and it's great. It lets me deliver thick games online during a pandemic that I simply couldn't do any other way. But if there's no activity on this game for two weeks, the platform deletes it. OK, and it took me ages to add all of these files. So I do not want that to happen. So if we go into edit mode, uh, sorry, if we go back into edit mode, you will see this thing here called room options. And it's very simple. It's just got two things in export room, export to file or import room, import to file. So as soon as you have finished your game, you want to export it to a file. And what you get is a file that looks like this. It's got a PCIO, playing cards IO extension, and that saves the file and all its imagery to uh, your computer so that you can then re-import it later if you haven't done any activity for two weeks. This is important for two reasons. Firstly, it's a backup so that you don't lose it, lose the entire game. Uh, but secondly, 
if I share this game um, using, you know, the share room option here, I'm given a link, which is this link, this thing here that is appended to the URL. Now, once I've shared the game, anyone can come in and do anything they like within the, the restrictions of the platform. So they can come in and play this game. So they can move things around. If I was in the middle of a game in a teaching situation and had, I'd made this link public, somebody could come in and spoil the game by pressing the recall and shuffle button um, in the middle of my game. So the way I'm managing this in terms of teaching and sharing it with people is I always have a master copy that is my copy and then I make a new game for every uh, instantiation, for every time I want to play it, I make a new room uh, using the, the terms of this uh, platform and I will play it just once in that room and then let it kind of be deleted after two weeks. Um, so do be aware of that if you're going to share the link um, publicly in any way just be aware that anybody can join that room at any time and come and kind of start playing the game perhaps when you're testing or using it so what i would advise is one copy for you a master copy that you keep a backup of on your computer and then one different room for every time you're going to use it okay i hope this tutorial was helpful um any questions please get in touch uh, thanks very much and thanks to playingcards.io for making this platform available in the first place. Okay, bye-bye.